Well, part of, part of Christmas is the anticipation, right? Uh, do you remember when you were little, when there was a package under the tree with your name on it, and you wondered what it was, you maybe had an inkling? Now, when I was little, we usually didn't have uh, packages under the tree. We had some of those Charlie Brown live trees that Dad got the day or two before Christmas Eve and, and uh, put it in a bucket of sand and, and just set it up there and didn't have presents under it until I was about eight. And we bought one of these. Remember those? Anybody remember those aluminum trees? Yeah, you know, those are coming back in some places now. I couldn't believe that. Uh, but that was, that was really an in thing there for a while when we, uh, when we got that. Uh, so think with me about one particular package that was under the tree for you. Uh, that caused you a great deal of anticipation. Think about that. Okay, now I remember one year there was a package under the tree with my name on it. It was just the right size and I was sure it was a pair of six guns with a genuine imitation leather holster and I was positive that was what was in that package and I'd say something to my dad about it and he said, well, you know, it probably isn't that. But I was convinced, no, he's just saying that to sort of throw me off track because I wanted those guns so bad. Well, that kind of anticipation and longing is really just a, a kind of a dim imitation of the, the anticipation that the Apostle Peter wrote about when he said that the prophets with great anticipation looked intently and with great care into what God had prepared for the world. The Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit in them was pointing to something big that God was going to do. They just weren't quite sure what it was sometimes. They had an inkling that it was about the Messiah and what God was going to do, but you know, they were, they just couldn't wait for God's plan to be unwrapped and uncovered and to see what God was doing in the world. Well, with the exception of John the Baptist, those prophets talked about this and wrote about it hundreds of years before Jesus was born. In fact, uh, the last prophet that we have recorded in the Bible was at least 400 years before the birth of Christ. So they anticipated for a long time. Well, during these four weeks of Advent, we anticipate the celebration of Jesus' birth. We decorate our homes and our churches, uh, but most importantly, we prepare our hearts for what God is wanting to do in us. We look again to the prophets and imagine what it must have been like to just have a hazy inkling about the Messiah and what was coming. Wouldn't that be hard? I think that would be a really difficult thing to live through, to just anticipate but not know for sure what God was doing. Well, we can't go back and pretend that we're Jews living before the birth of Jesus, but because we have all experienced anticipation through things like just waiting for the time to unwrap that Christmas present, we understand a little bit, just get an inkling of what the prophets felt when they looked forward to what God was doing. Remember that present that I asked you to think about? 
earlier? Did everybody be able to think of something? Anybody here not able to think of something? Well, I hope you did, I, and I hope it was good. So when you opened it, were you surprised? Because surprise is a big part of Christmas too, isn't it? It's not just anticipation. There's that surprise when you finally open the package. I remember when I opened that box that I was sure had the pair of six guns and the genuine imitation leather holster and there were no shiny pearl handle guns in that package. It was a junior architect's drawing set. It didn't look quite as dumb as this box because I couldn't find a picture of, of the thing that I actually received. But I thought, oh my gosh, I was so disappointed, you know. I was imagining, you know, standing there with my six guns blazing as a, a gang of outlaws uh, tried to tried to get me when I was trying to take a man. I never daydream about sitting and drawing some dumb picture, right? You know, that just wasn't my thing when I was that age. Sometimes we're surprised when we open what a loved one has prepared for us. Uh, it was that way when people read the words of the prophets and joined them in longing to look into God's plan. Now, sometimes the surprise when we open something is in the form of disappointment, right? We've got pictures of our boys with almost that same expression on their face, whether it was underwear or socks or deodorant or something like that that we'd give them on Christmas. Uh, maybe some of you can appreciate that. I probably look that way when I open the junior architect drafting set. But at any rate, sometimes though, we do have an awestruck wonder when we open something up. Maybe sometime you've received a present that was so good and so far beyond what you expected that your response was just shock and wonder. I think it was that way for Jean, the Christmas that I gave her her first microwave oven. You know, she was not too keen on it at first. She thought it was too much money, but I said, look, this is going to speed up things in our family. I was a pastor by then, and said, look, it will help when we can just heat up food in a microwave and get to the next place where we need to be. So sometimes there is almost an awestruck wonder at how good that present is. Uh, now the prophets long to look into the plans of God, but none of them, of course, fully understood what God had prepared. Uh, people had all kinds of ideas of what the Messiah would be like, but most of the people who read their words didn't really get it. And we can sort of understand that because when we look back at the life of Jesus now and the words of the prophets, we can see how it lines up, but it would have been really difficult for people before Jesus was born to understand what God was about. The people would have missed that the Messiah was going to come in lowliness and poverty, born to a poor couple from a little backwater town. I mean, the Son of God, think about that. It's totally, it seems totally contrary to reason. They missed the fact that Jesus not only would be poor, but he would be hunted. That he would be part of an immigrant family who sought asylum in the rich country of Egypt. The neighbor next door to go there to escape King Herod and escape from death. They didn't understand the words that Jesus was going to be persecuted 
that he was going to be arrested and beaten, that he'd be rejected by the crowd, humiliated, and ultimately hung to die on a cross between two thieves. They seemed to have some inkling of the glory that was going to come through the Messiah's reign, but they didn't understand that he had to pass through tremendous suffering to be able to get there. Yet, as St. Peter reminded us, the ordeal of the Messiah, of the Christ, is what saves us because it was more than we ever could have anticipated beforehand. More than we could have imagined. We are blessed beyond our expectations in what Jesus did for us. Well, it turns out I used that junior architect drawing set a few times, not so much for fun, but a few years later, um, when I took shop class as a freshman in high school, I didn't know what I was going to build for my shop project, and Dad said, how about making me a pair of sawhorses? And I said, a pair of sawhorses? My gosh, the other guys were making furniture. And he said, well, just make me something that's adjustable and really nice. So I, I drew out plans for sawhorses that you could stand up like a regular sawhorse, and if you had to do work up higher, you could stand it on end, and it would be perfectly stable. If you needed to cut a big sheet of plywood, they had this swinging arm underneath but that you'd stick a pin in and hold it up so you could have a huge area that would be supported or, or some really long boards. Uh, yeah, I know that's not something that's really exciting. It's not as exciting as a pair of pearl handle six guns that go bang when you pull the trigger, right? But at any rate, I did use it. And in fact, it was more useful than those cap guns ever would have been. Well, not only did the prophets long to see God's plan unwrapped, but Peter wrote, that even angels long to look into God's long-anticipated, surprising, and glorious plan of salvation. This morning we remember that anticipation, that surprise, and the glory that came to us, even though it rested in a feed box in a cave halfway around the world in Bethlehem. Thanks be to God that we remember that today. Amen and amen.